people that I didn't know, I was in the street, and even when I got to work, there was a kind of culture there that didn't really know how to handle this. And um, I subsequently, um, in, in terms of the theme of tonight, is I decided that um, when it kept happening, or when I kept feeling this way, um, I suddenly felt that maybe I'd made the mistake in starting for the second year. So to cut long story short, I got on the next plane out of Chang Wan and flew back home for the safety of my, and the bosom of my family. Um, I subsequently had about two or three months off not working, thinking, what am I going to do next? I knew I wanted to do teaching, so I'd enjoyed the year that I had in, in South Korea, but I knew I wanted to teach because it was kind of bringing out the sort of hidden thespian in me, so maybe this is also bringing out the hidden thespian in me as well. And um, I took a, what they call a CELTA, which is a certificate of English to, you know, to, it's the qualification day, the formal qualification that you do. I did it here in Norwich uh, in 2009, so about 10, 10 years ago. And with that, I then worked for uh, a company, an educational company in Cambridge on a young learner activity program. Uh, and that was great. Two fantastic summers there. I also went to Beijing uh, with the same company. So uh, it was uh, the same company, but in Beijing and um, had a great experience there. So, yeah, what happened, well, obviously what happened in South Korea was, was just a blip. That wasn't, you know, that was just one-off, maybe. But um, I subsequently also got a job in Saudi Arabia, so I'm moving, moving on a little bit here. So I got a job in Saudi Arabia. Uh, you think, oh, culture, context, it's going to be very difficult there. No, I was, I was absolutely fine. Came back to Saudi Arabia, went through my first summer at the language school in Cambridge, which was brilliant, the first two summers. Suddenly, it hit me, two days in, the day before the first class, it hit me, and I just got overwhelmed. The panic attack started happening, and I thought, oh my god, this is what happened in Korea. I've been fine in Beijing, I've been fine in Saudi Arabia, and suddenly the panic attacks were happening again. I didn't know, I knew it was a panic attack because I've had it before, and I was having all the symptoms, the palpitations. That fight or flight response that you know about, and it goes in with the theme tonight, should I share it, should I stay with it, you know, that amygdala in your brain that says, oh, this is, I'm perceiving this as a threat, I must, I must run away from the situation. And the third time I taught at the school in English, this is what happened. I, I left. I, I, I can't get the grammar right. I flew, I float, I thought, flip, no. Fight or flight. I, what's the past tense? Help me. Flight. Flew. Flew. <laughs> yes. I'm an English language teacher. Can you tell? Um, flew. It's called elicity. Um, anyway, so I flew and I, and I left. And what, what started to happen, I started to do this thing where I had a situational response. So I was kind of given a certain situation and given these feelings, Palpitations, the sweaty palms, and all the things you get with a panic attack, which you know. You either know it or you know somebody who goes through this. And I thought, well, this is happening again, and it's going to happen again, again, and again when I'm in a similar situation. Different country, different context, different employer, different students, but the symptoms were repeated. Moving on, I thought I, I really still want to do English language teaching, so I did a master's at the University of Warwick. That was fine, a whole year there. And then I went to, well, immediately after that, I went to Vietnam. I don't know why I chose Vietnam. I just thought I'd, I have been there, you know, that part of the world, Southeast, Southeast, Southeast Asia. I thought I'd go to Vietnam. I've worked there. Same thing happened there. Two weeks in, first class, panic attack, same symptoms. Spoke to the line manager, spoke to the owner of the school, had to go. Just flew. My, my natural instinct to say, this isn't right. I'm not coping with this. I've got to get out of the situation. And so I did. 2013 was uh, what I call my annus horribilis. Um, 2013, I had three jobs, or attempted three jobs. Uh, one in Cambridge, uh, one uh, in China again, and one in Leicester. And each time I went into the job, I got the job, it was fine, interview, fine, get the job. Induction week, fine, induction great, everything's fine, organised, great, like how I like to be. And then, bam, first lesson, or just before the first lesson, panic again. So. Having it happen three times in the same year made me think, I've got a problem. Perhaps teaching isn't my thing. Maybe teaching isn't what I should be doing. You know, I don't believe in necessarily higher powers, but maybe this is a reason why I'm not, you know, maybe I'm not supposed to do Maybe I'm supposed to do something else. But you actually be an actor, maybe, instead of just yeah. a teacher. So I took a fair time away from teaching because I thought, well, I pay teaching anyway. Um, I worked for Mind in Norwich and I did a bit of voluntary teaching where there was no pressure. Not paid, but no pressure. Um, and actually, that's with a fellow friend and storyteller, Sarah. She was, she, was, she was great and she sort of coaxed me back into the sort of 
teaching and gave me some confidence again. But 2014, didn't really teach much. 2015, no, didn't really teach much. 2016, it was about a month when I was doing some online IELTS preparation for the speaking tests. That didn't last because basically I got my, caught up one morning and I was having anxiety and panic attack about just going online in my own house, in my own living room and, 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 and doing the lessons. So that ended. Um, but things have got better. So I was still learning, but I was going to have to stop. I was still learning from experience of what was going on with me. 2017, I applied for a job at uh, the University here in Norwich for the summer, what we call processional teaching. So it's like English for academic purposes, getting students, mostly international students, mostly Chinese, getting them ready for full-time master's studies in this country. 2017, that summer, fantastic. Brilliant summer, great experience, wrote about it. 2018, the spying summer, fantastic. No problems, no panic attacks, brilliant experience. What was it? Friends, colleagues, just the safety, the knowledge that is Norwich, not South Korea or Vietnam or Riyadh. And um, yeah, so everything was fine, that's all so I thought. But in the meantime, between 2017 and 2018, I, I thought, well, this is an interesting topic, and I wonder what other language teachers go through. Do they suffer? So I, I devised a questionnaire, and in December, on December the 1st, 2017, I sent this questionnaire out, questionnaire out to a few people. They shared it, and then it was reshared and reshared. And it all started on just a post on Facebook, and I think I tweeted it as well, maybe shared it in other ways. And I did this survey, which got filled in by over 500 English language teaching professionals from around the world. And I was just gobsmacked. I was overwhelmed. I couldn't believe that so many people had filled in my questionnaire. And I got 66,000 words, which I had to kind of go through and analyse and digest and get out key quotes and put it into a blog post. And I presented this in Brighton in 2018. So April 2018, I went to Brighton for the first time ever presented at a teachers' conference, international teachers' conference in Brighton about this research that I've done. I personalised it. I said, well, yeah, the reason I'm doing this is because I suffered from depression, I suffered from panic attacks, been gen uh, diagnosed with generalised anxiety disorder when I was in hospital in 2013, or even in the psychiatric psych 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 unit at one point. And um, so I did this research, I presented this research, and it was extremely well received. And I subsequently did a workshop in Liverpool at the, the, the following teachers' conference, which was this year. And I've just got a huge positive response from people uh, around the world and people that come up to me at conferences and said, you're doing a great thing. You're talking about a topic which has so far not really been talked about in our profession. We talked about in state education in this country, but in our, con in our context, we're often in difficult contexts around the world difficult working conditions, poor pay, insecure contracts, lots of factors why you get stress and anxiety in those different jobs. And so I've actually got something positive out of my negative, well not negative, but you know, my experience, let's say, my adverse experience. And, um, and that's where I am now. I, I talk about it at conferences, I uh, write about it on my blog, and um, yeah, I, I'm not saying I'm cured, I mean, I'll never be cured, I'll never be healed from my generalised anxiety disorder. I always have to manage it, be careful, and medication obviously helps. But, you know, I'm doing my bit by sharing my knowledge and sharing my research and just generally talking about a topic which, you know, in my profession wasn't really talked about that much. And that is my story. Thank you very much.